Okay, thank you everyone uh, for your patience while we get started. It's nice to see such a good turnout um, for our first uh, webinar of 2023. Um, it feels like whenever I hear that that the, that year that we're officially living in the future, uh, which of course means that we're living with more and more EMF all the time, which is why tonight's topic is so important. I mean, we, we hear a lot, of, well, especially here if you're listening to me uh, in emails and on the web, you know, we talk a lot about EMF and all these different sources, but tonight we're going to be talking specifically about one that I believe is the most important. Um, but first, quickly, I'm going to be trying something new tonight. So I am here live right now. You'll see me typing in the, the chat pod and answering questions and so forth. Uh, but I pre-recorded the presentation part of this webinar. Now this is, no one else has ever seen it. It's not like I just pulled it out of a can and you're showing it to you. This is, I recorded it just for tonight, um, but I'm hoping, and again, this is my first time trying it. I'm hoping this makes it easier for me to interact with all of you through the chat and the Q&A pod. So then when that part is done, I'll be right here to answer all of your questions. If you have any questions while you're watching the presentation, please post them into the Q&A pod, not the chat pod. I'll be monitoring both, but when it comes time to actually do q and I'll be looking at the Q&A pod. So please make sure for that. Uh, one more thing in this webinar, I mentioned a lot of specific scientific studies, uh, but of course, because it's a webinar, I'm not including these long links with citations. So if you're interested in the actual links and citations, please check the ebook that you'll be getting from me tomorrow. I link to all of these citations and more from that ebook, and uh, you'll actually be the first people to to get a copy of that ebook. That is a brand new uh, ebook. Okay, so let's get into it. Give me one second here, and you'll have to tell, type type to me in the in the pod if this doesn't in the chat pod if this doesn't work. Welcome everyone to the SYB webinar, Where Do You Carry Your Phone? Very briefly about me, my name is R. Blank. I'm the CEO of Shield Your Body, as well as the host of the Healthier Tech podcast. Previously, I served on the faculty of the University of Southern California School of Engineering, and along with my father, Dr. Martin Blank, co-authored Overpowered about the science of EMF health effects. This follows a 20-year career in software engineering. Now we'll start with TLDR. If you didn't know, TLDR stands for, it stands for too long, didn't read. And so if you wanna to cut to the chase of this webinar, it's this, do not carry your phone in your pocket or your bra, or put it into airplane mode if you do. Or if you can't do either of those things, then invest in SYB's products that make it safer to carry your phone. That's the key message. EMF is complex, but protecting yourself isn't. Now, if you want to understand why this is so important and why these specific changes in particular are so important, that's what we're going to talk about now. Keep your cell phone away from your body. That's a direct quote from Dr. Linda Birnbaum. And she's not just any doctor. She's a toxicologist and microbiologist and the former director of the National Institute for Environmental Health Sciences, as well as the US National Toxicology Program. Why is Dr. Birnbaum so concerned about this behavior? People, all of us, assume and want to believe that when a product is made available for sale, it's safe. But as we keep learning time and time again, that's just not true. As we can see from the examples of thalidomide, leaded gasoline and leaded paint, and of course, tobacco. And that's just to name a few. Now, in the case of cell phones, there technically are regulations that supposedly control the amount of radiation that cell phones can emit. But as you're about to see, these regulations do not protect us. We'll start with SAR. For regulatory purposes, cell phone radiation is measured with something called SAR, or specific absorption rate. It is a measurement of radiation absorption, how much radiation you absorb from a cell phone. But of course, it isn't actually how much radiation you absorb from a cell phone because they measure SAR with a dummy called the Specific Anthropomorphic Mannequin, or SAM for short. So in these tests, they measure how much radiation 
Sam absorbs. The problem is that Sam is built to emulate a large adult male, a man who is six foot two and 220 pounds. That's bigger than 97% of the world's population. That means that 97% of the world's population will absorb more radiation than SAR shows. SAR testing tests how much radiation comes from your cell phone connection, the wireless connection from your phone to the cell tower. But today's phones have many more wireless connections. There's Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, NFC, or near field communication. Each one of these connections is a separate source of EMF not covered in the SAR testing. SAR testing doesn't measure all the EMF coming from your phone. And that's just a couple of the many flaws with SAR. You can learn more in the ebook that accompanies this webinar. Now I've explained a couple of the reasons that cell phone regulations leave us vulnerable to serious health risk. And again, there are more if you read the ebook. But of course, most of us can't give up our phones. It's not viable in today's world. So instead, you should stop carrying your phone in your pocket or your bra. Now, why does this behavior matter so much? Because the power of EMF radiation gets exponentially weaker with distance. Yes, I said exponentially. EMF weakens exponentially with distance. So each additional inch, even millimeter of distance that you put between yourself and the source of the EMF will have a big impact on your exposure. Literally every inch matters when it comes to your EMF exposure. When you carry your phone in your pocket or your bra, there is literally zero distance separating the phone from your body. You are getting the maximum possible dose of EMF from your phone. So to radically reduce your EMF exposure from your phone, you want to make sure it's as far away from your body as possible and definitely not in your pocket or your bra. Now, why should you just listen to the advice of me? I'm just one guy. Well, the answer is because it's not just me. In fact, it's the actual cell phone manufacturers that are telling you the same thing. It's in the fine print. Dr. Deborah Davis is the founder and president of the Environmental Health Trust. She has worked for the National Academy of Sciences and as a senior advisor in the US Department of Health and Human Services. And that's just part of her resume. She's a super impressive scientist. As Dr. Dever Davis explains, fine print warnings that manufacturers include in packaging with today's smartphones like the iPhone advise that phones can exceed the FCC guidelines if kept in the pocket. But few people are aware of this. That's right, they're saying phones can expose you to more radiation than is legally allowed if you carry it right up against your body. And the ebook that accompanies this webinar has specific examples from specific cell phone manuals. Now, it's not just the cell phone companies that know cell phones are dangerous to your health. It's their insurers, too. In fact, leading underwriters for Lloyd's of London and AM Best refuse to insure cell phone companies against future health claims arising from EMF exposure. If Lloyd's of London won't take the risk, why would you? That leads directly to the next question. What are the actual health risks? Now, I am often asked about the known health effects of EMF. And before I dive into specifics, I like to provide a more general overview to introduce the topic. And this is how I like to explain it. The story that the science tells is that we find negative health effects in basically every biological system we investigate. We see it in cancers, in the endocrine system, in the nervous system, in the reproductive system, in the circulatory system, with neurodegenerative diseases. We find these effects everywhere. And it's not just in humans. We see it in animals, insects, fish, even plants, and trees. EMF, even at levels much lower than we get off of a single cell phone, negatively affects essentially every single biological system. Now, I have a lot of links in the accompanying ebook to learn more. But for the purposes of this webinar, I want to highlight some of the effects that are more, most directly tied to carrying phones in pockets or bras, directly against very sensitive parts of your body. One of the areas of EMF science with the strongest evidence is the impact on sperm viability and motility, in other words, male fertility. In many parts of the world, scientists and fertility doctors are noticing a drop in sperm count and sperm motility, which makes it harder for couples to have babies. 
In fact, it is estimated that male fertility has dropped by over 50% in the last 50 years. A 2012 study in France, for example, estimated that for a 35-year-old man, sperm concentration dropped from 73.6 million per milliliter in 1989 to 49.9 million per milliliter in 2005. That's a 32% drop in just 26 years. In 2012, the Environmental Working Group, or EWG, reported that their scientists had analyzed multiple scientific studies documenting evidence that cell phone radiation exposure leads to slower, fewer, and shorter-lived sperm. The research raises concerns for men who carry their phones on their belts or in pants pockets. That is a quote. The science here is incredibly strong. Carrying your phone in your pocket is killing your sperm. We've done a lot of research on cell phones. In studies where we directly exposed sperm to cell phone radiation, it did damage the sperm. That's according to the director of the Center for Male Fertility at the Cleveland Clinic. Okay, so that's men. What about women? Well, female reproductive cells, or eggs, are very different from male reproductive cells, or sperm. One way in which they are different is that eggs are more protected deep inside each woman's body, and the body provides some natural shielding against EMF, whereas sperm resides outside the body in the testicles. This means that sperm is much more vulnerable to EMF radiation exposure than are eggs. Now, women's eggs may be more resilient to radiation from cell phones in pockets than are male sperm, but that doesn't mean cell phone radiation exposure is safe for women and their reproductive systems. In 2014, researchers in one study demonstrated that increased stress can lead to a significant decline in women's fertility and ability to become pregnant. Women with the highest levels of alpha amylase, which is an indicator of stress, had a 29% reduced chance of conceiving. And another study from 2009 revealed that people living within 100 meters of cell phone towers had notably higher levels of alpha amylase in their bodies. So we have studies showing that exposure to this type of radiation increases alpha amylase and other studies showing that increased rates of alpha amylase lead to a reduced chance of conceiving. Separately, a 2017 study found that mobile phone exposure impairs female reproductive systems by increasing oxidative and nitrosative stress. So even though women's eggs are better protected than male sperm, there are clear indications that EMF exposure negatively harms female fertility and reproduction. But it's not just fertility. In 2017, Dr. D. Kun Lee of the Kaiser Foundation Research Institute published a study on EMF exposure and miscarriage risk. Dr. Lee's EMF study had a total of 913 participants. These women wore EMF meters 24 hours a day, so all their exposures were measured. His conclusion, pregnant women who were highly EMF exposed had a 2.72 times greater risk of miscarriage. Now, miscarriage is a horrible and traumatic outcome. However, it is not the only risk from in utero EMF exposure. There's a large and growing body of research demonstrating that fetuses are quite vulnerable to damage from EMF exposure in utero. A 2008 study from UCLA, for example, found that prenatal EMF exposure doubled the incidence of behavioral, pro behavioral problems by the age of seven. That is, more EMF exposure uh, of the fetus in the mother led to greater de uh, doubling of the chances of uh, forming and developing behavioral, pro behavioral problems later in childhood. In 2012, the Bioinitiative report concluded that fetal and early childhood exposures to cell phone radiation and wireless technologies in general may be a risk factor for hyperactivity, learning disorders, and behavioral problems in school. And a, 2012, a 2011 study from Kaiser Permanente found that the more EMF a fetus was exposed to in utero, the greater the chance that the baby developed asthma by age 13. Now, when talking about cell phones, a lot of the focus is on cancer, specifically brain tumors. And justifiably so, it's terrifying. But science is drawing links between EMF exposure and many other types of tumors and cancer as well. One of these is colorectal cancer, 
whose rates are soaring, especially among young people. According to the American Cancer Society, deaths from colorectal cancer, cancer among people younger than age 55 have increased 1% per year from 2007 and 2016. And according to a report from the Journal of the National Cancer Institute, between 1989 and 2013, the proportion of rectal cancer diagnosed in the adults younger than 55 doubled. Those born in 1990 have doubled the risk of colon cancer and quadrupled the risk of rectal cancer than those born in 1950. Wow. As a veteran researcher into the effects of EMF on human health, Dr. D. Kun Lee, whose uh, other work we, we investigated a few slides ago from Kaiser Permanente, has put forward a theory on what's causing those mutations. Radiation from cell phones. Quote, when placed in Drouser pockets, the phones are in the vicinity of the rectum and the distal colon, and these are the sites of the largest increases in cancer, he told Microwave News. When you carry your phone in your bra, as opposed to your pocket, you are obviously carrying it directly against your breast. And as mentioned previously, EMF exposure is linked to multiple types of tumor and cancer formation. The World Health Organization even designates cell phone radiation as a class 2B carcinogen. So it makes intuitive sense that carrying your phone in your bra will increase your risk of developing breast cancer. Unfortunately, carrying one's phone in one's bra is a shockingly common habit. For instance, in 2017, researchers at Monash University in Australia surveyed nearly 200 women aged 15 to 40 and found that a quarter of them had carried their smartphone tucked into their bra, with 15% doing so in the, pri in the week prior. Now, in my opinion, this specific question of whether uh, cell phones uh, cause breast cancer is frustratingly under-investigated and more science is needed. Until then, given the many, many links between cell phones and multiple types of cancers and tumors, we have plenty of reason to exercise precaution. Finally, we'll look at erectile dysfunction, commonly referred to as ED. It's one of the most common sexual disorders in the world, affecting millions of men. A 2018 survey says that 5 to 10% of men under 40 have suffered from ED at least once in their lifetime. Experts predict that the number of men who have erectile dysfunction will reach 332 million by 2025. And there's an increasing amount of data demonstrating that EMF plays a significant role in this number. Even though EMF may not directly lead to ED, it can create the health conditions that induce it. How? EMF decreases your testosterone levels. EMF creates sleep disorders. EMF builds mental stress. EMF induces oxidative stress. And EMF interferes with your reproductive endocrine system. All six of these are contributing factors to erectile dysfunction. As I mentioned at the top, EMF exposure, like from cell phones, has been linked to numerous negative health effects. When it comes to the risks of carrying your phone on your body, we zoomed in on a select few. Male infertility and subfertility, female fertility, miscarriage risk, birth defects, breast cancer, and erectile dysfunction. But I just want to underscore these are just a sampling of some of the known health risks from EMF exposure. And when you're carrying your phone in your pocket or in your bra, you are getting a lot of EMF exposure. So what's the solution? Well, as I said at the beginning, the solution is not to carry your phone in your pocket or your bra or put it into airplane mode if you do. Seriously, this is the number one tip I tell people who want to make a big reduction in their exposure to EMF radiation. It really is that simple. Now, carrying your phone in your pocket or your bra can be one of your largest sources of EMF radiation, and the best solution is to stop doing that or by putting it into airplane mode. This is quick, it's free, it's super effective. In fact, it's the best possible solution. But many of us will still carry our phones in our pockets. It's just so convenient. And sometimes we have no practical choice. And that's where good EMF protection products come in, which is why I've created a whole line of products specifically designed to make it safer to carry your phone. The SYB phone pouch is a unique and affordable way to shield your body from up to 99% of harmful cell phone radiation. It's made from neoprene. The back 
is lined with a powerful EMF shielding fabric. Because the shielding is only on one side, the foam pouch protects you without impacting your cell signal or battery life. It just deflects radiation away from your body while still allowing your phone to work. Just put your phone in the pouch and then carry the pouch in your pocket or on your belt. It's available in multiple sizes and colors. And in fact, we now have the pouch deluxe, which is the evolution of our phone pouch. And it's another way of making it safer to carry your phone as well as other stuff like your wallet, headphones, and keys. It has a bunch of additional features not found in the phone pouch, like three ways to carry it, a shoulder strap, belt hoop, and carabiner, two separate compartments with zipper closures, a shielded magnetic flap, and it fits every phone on the market, made from durable and resilient 100% polyester. The 5G phone shield is a card that performs the same function as the phone pouch and pouch deluxe, right? Because you just put this card in between your phone and your body when you carry it in your pocket, and it deflects radiation away from your body, again, without ruining your phone's reception or battery life. Now, you can carry, this is a great way to carry your phone more safely without carrying another bag or other device. And it even includes convenient slots to carry your credit cards or IDs. Now, getting a little bit bigger, right? Phones aren't the only portable sources of EMF that we carry around with us. Tablets, e-readers, even gaming systems. We all have so much portable tech, and all of it emits EMF radiation. So how can you carry it more safely? That's why we created the SYB Sling Bag, a stylish and convenient way to carry your tech more safely. It's big enough to carry an iPad, but small enough to bring with you anywhere you go. And with three compartments, it can hold a lot of your tech as well as your other stuff like wallets and keys and makeup. It's comfortable and convenient designed with you in mind. Now, getting stepping a, uh, one size up even further, we have the brand new SYB backpack built to accommodate even more of your stuff than the sling bag. The backpack can take it all, your phones, your tablets, even your 17-inch laptop plus whatever else you need to carry around that day, like books or mugs or anything. Stylish unisex design, the SYB backpack is a perfect accessory for children or adults to carry all your tech more safely. All of these products that I just mentioned are made with SYB's Safer Body Shielding Material. At SYB, we take our product claims very seriously, and we want our customers like you to know that, which is why we have had our Safer Body Shielding Technology tested at multiple independent laboratories to show you that our Safer Body Shielding Tech shields up to 99% of EMF radiation, including 5G. And unlike other companies, this report includes results for low-frequency EMF, such as from power lines and AC appliances, as well as radio frequency or RF from wireless communication. And you can view the report for yourself at shieldyourbody.com test. And I also want to highlight, for those of you who don't already know, any order of my products from my website includes a lifetime warranty, 30-day no questions asked returns, and free shipping on all orders over $100 in North America and Europe. I do everything I can to make this a risk-free decision for you. We also pride ourselves on our outstanding level of customer service. At SYB, we strive to ensure every customer is completely satisfied with their purchase and their entire experience with SYB. It's not enough just to make the world's best EMF protection products. We also strive for a fantastic customer experience, which you can see noted in our many reviews. And you can find all of this information that I've walked through and our whole catalog, our reviews, our laboratory testing at shieldyourbody.com. Okay. Thank you. Let me just load up screen sharing real quick. So uh, that was the presentation. We're about to get into q and I want to remind everybody, because again, this was a a webinar, it's hard, and I cited a lot of things, and it's hard to get all that, uh, the links and the details and the citations across. So it's all coming to you via email tomorrow in this uh, free guide that you can just download. You'll get the direct download link by email, uh, and that includes, uh, again, all the links and citations from what I was talking about today, as well as a lot more information as well. And this is a brand new guide 
Um, no one else has actually seen this yet. So you'll be the first and your comments are more than uh, welcome. I'd love to hear what you think. Okay, now before we get to Q&A, as always with an SYB webinar, I promise everyone who attends live a discount. Um, and so uh, tonight's discount is 25% off all of the products you just saw. Actually, it, it works on, 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 on every product in our catalog. Uh, so you would enter carry phone 25 at checkout. And this lasts through midnight tonight Pacific time. So if you're watching this as a replay, this code will not work. Um, I, I save the bigger discounts for people who take the time to come join me live for these webinars. Um, so that's at shieldyourbody.com. The discount code is carryphone25. One final note before we get to Q&A um, is to let you all know that we have another webinar coming up in just a couple of weeks, and it's going to be our first healthier tech webinar. Um, not that we're not going to be talking about products. We're not going to be talking really about EMF, but this is about ways of of uh, thriving in an always on constantly distracted world. Digital wellness is no longer a luxury, but a lifestyle imperative for our health. And it is also an important way in which we can work to reduce our EMF exposure and the EMF exposure of people around us. So join us as we look into practical and tangible steps in order to have a healthier relationship with technology. This will be presented by uh, Rajul Aurora. He's a certified digital workplace and wellness educator, and his vision is to enable people to lead a, a healthy relationship. Uh, lead a healthy relationship with technology. He's also a TEDx speaker, coach, and author. He's delivered his message from audiences from Sony to Yes Magazine. Um, and uh, in this webinar, you will learn how to become aware of digital overload, what research tells us about the impact of our tech, tools for leading a healthy relationship with tech, and access to invaluable resources on digital wellness. So you can register for that at healthiertech.co slash webinar. And uh, that link will also be in the email that you receive from us tomorrow. So again, a free webinar in a few weeks. Uh, so please stay tuned for that. I'm really looking forward to this. It'll be our first Healthier Tech uh, webinar. So if someone asked what the discount code is again, and that is the discount code. Um, and let's see. So we have some questions coming in. I see one in the chat pod. If you have, I'll answer the one there from Julia. Uh, if any of you have questions, uh, please put them into um, into the Q&A pod like anonymous attendee just did. Okay, so let me just put that code back up there. Again, this is just through, whoop, just through midnight tonight. Okay, so let's see. Julia asks, and I hope I'm sharing the, the right screen. Um, <laughs> can someone type in and if they make sure they're seeing the, the discount code? Um, any plans for a camisole, sports bra, undershirt type of garment for women to wear under their normal clothes? What about a blanket for adults? You do not see the code. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, well, Joe, okay, let me just type it quickly in the, uh, in the chat pod. Yes, thank you, Jilly. Okay. Um, Julia, all of the, from Philly, hi. Um, uh, all of those products are products that uh, we have in one stage of development or another. It's always a challenge for a small company like ours to, I mean, if you, if you saw our whole, ro our whole roadmap, uh, you'd see it's really long and it's uh, always challenging. I mean, we're a small company, so bringing products to market and, uh, you know, takes time, it takes money, it takes resources. And also, you know, we work to get them right. Uh, give me one second here. I want to show you this, right? Because this is one of the products I talked about tonight. It's the Pouch Deluxe. This plus the sling bag, which I also have handy, I'll show, um, uh, are my two, two, my two favorite SYB products. I use them all the time. I use other of my products, but these are the two I use all the time. And I use them really to carry... Oh, my camera's not on. Thank you, Kim. I forgot to turn it back on after the recording. So... Um, so this is the Pouch Deluxe, and the reason I'm bringing it up in answer to Julia's question is, you know, if, if you see this in real life, you will see this is a quality product. This is not like an off-of-the-shelf product. This, this is something that we have designed ourselves. Uh, this took, uh, I, 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 it was about a dozen design revisions 
Um, and all of this takes time, and we, we make sure it, it's really high quality, goes through QA. That's all by way of saying, we're not just buying off the shelf products and putting our logo on them. Um, we, we put time and effort into, so that's why we haven't gotten to nearly every product on our, on our roadmap. But everything you mentioned in your question, Julia, is something we have at one stage or another of development. Okay, Anonymous asks, um, Okay, what are the better websites for those living in cities about to rent or buy uh, to comprehensively know where are all the major or minor uh, infrastructure, uh, EMF infrastructure? Okay, so you're already familiar with antenna search. Um, now, one thing I would say, if you're looking to rent or buy um, is to get, give me one second here to load this up. You know, there, there are some websites that I can show you and I will tell you about them. Oops, is this loading? There we go. So if you go to, and I already put this URL in the presentation because it's where we have our test data. But if you go to this page, shieldyourbody.com slash test, and you scroll down, you can get this guide of how to test EMF for yourself. Again, it's another free guide. This is now, I think it, the cover here says six, but I just updated it for 2023. So it's now in its seventh edition. It's, it's a really good guide on learning how to test for yourself. I also make meter recommendations. Uh, I don't make or sell meters and I don't get any affiliate revenue from the recommendations that I make. Um, anytime you are looking to rent or buy a new place, I strongly recommend investing in a decent quality meter and taking it there um, to uh, do the testing yourself. Because even if there's you know theoretically low infrastructure, um, it, it could be that the wiring in the house is leading to tremendous emissions or some other invisible or effectively invisible source. So testing is really the only other way. Um, the, the other one I wanted to mention is this, the UCLA 5G map. So that's at speedtest.net. Well, just Google UCLA 5G map and you will be able to see it. Um, and there is one other, uh, uh, that I, give me one second to see if I can, yes, um, let's see what is the link, globalemf.net. Okay, good, I found it. I didn't wanna to take too much time looking because I had forgotten the uh, link, but there it is. So globalemf.net, this is a citizen science project from Dr. Magda Havas. She's based in, in Canada, but, um, uh, people can enroll effectively contributing their own uh, measurements. So people with uh, decent quality meters are taking measurements and you can zoom in on places and see what, what the levels are that people have measured in different parts of the world. So those would be the three. You mentioned antennasearch.com, uh, the, the UCLA 5G map, and globalemf.net. But again, just the knowing what the inf the infrastructure the wireless infrastructure is in a location is it's important but it's not the full picture and that's why learning how to test is i think really important for anyone who cares about their emf exposure okay talia says she has another bag that says when you put your device in it you can't get calls and texts because it completely blocks the signals do my bags work the same so the answer is no um, and why not is, and this, is, this goes back all the way to the foam pouch, which is now six years old. Um, in my bags, only the back is shielded, right? The part that is, would be between your device and your body. Um, if you fully shielded the, the bag, um, you could uh, block the signal. Um, and in doing so, uh, you, you can actually end up burning out your battery. Um, and, and my view is on that, if you really want to cut off all the signal, then put your device into airplane mode, uh, which really cuts out all the signal and doesn't drain your battery and doesn't create all these other issues with your device. My products are designed specifically to reduce your exposure while actually still allowing your tech to work so you can receive calls and uh, alerts and updates and so forth. So my products are designed specifically for people who want to make it safer to carry their devices um, while also allowing those devices to work. If you really want to cut off the whole signal, then put your device into airplane mode. That is uh, why we don't 
create a fully shielded um, a fully shielded bag. Thank you for that question. Donna says, how can I verify that your products truly stop EMF radiation? Um, well, that's so thank you for asking that. Um, I'll go, I'll take you back to this uh, page. Oh, there we go. Um, so that guide that I put here, uh, it's, so it's at shieldyourbody.com slash test, the how to test EMF for yourself. I actually originally wrote this guide and I'm trying to remember when it was a long time ago, like 2015 or 2016, specifically to help educate customers on how to test my products. Um, now it's expanded since then, and people are using it just to learn how to test in general, but I originally wrote it uh, for that purpose. And I think you'll find we are the um, only EMF company out there that is actively encouraging our customers to test our product claims uh, for themselves. So uh, the, the way you would do it is by purchasing a decent, and I should have had it, I have them here, but I'd have to get up, a decent quality EMF meter. I talk about which, uh, which those are in this ebook. You buy a decent quality one and then learn how to use it and how to take measurements, what the measurements mean and so forth. So all of that is covered in this free guide. Um, so I, and I strongly encourage any of you uh, to to validate my product claims for yourself. Thank you, Donna. Um, okay, anonymous asks. Oh, such good information. Thank you. I appreciate that. I used to order a phone case from a company called RF Safe. The case had a radiation protective cover, which allowed me to talk on the phone with the phone held to my ear. The protective cover prevented radiation getting through to my head. Do you have anything like that? So my answer to that is no, um, because uh, and this all goes back and I said it multiple times in the presentation tonight, right? Uh, the best solution is to not carry your phone in your pocket uh, or to put it into airplane mode. And so I'm no, I, and the reason I'm emphasizing that is please note, I am not saying using an SYB product is the best defense. I am saying cutting out the source is the best defense because there is no EMF shielding product that is 100% effective 100% of the time. And so, so some will get through. And, I, and it's specifically the use case that you just cited, uh, which is uh, it make, they say it makes it safer to hold it up against your head. I don't want any products that even implicitly imply there is a safer way to hold a phone against your head. I feel like that, because uh, also you're gonna be on a call, right? So when you're on a call, you're emitting a lot, the phone is emitting a lot more radiation than when it's just in your pocket on standby. And so I don't believe that people should be using EMF phone cases because I don't believe it's ever appropriate to hold a phone up to your head. There's always an alternative, headphones or speaker phone or texting or something. And so that is why, and, and there are other companies out there that make those cases, as you noted, if, if you're interested in them. Um, but that, that is why I don't make any products like that. And that's also why, you know, the topic tonight was how to make it safer to carry your phone. Um, it wasn't how to make it safer to to hold this this device against your head because I I I never in fact I'm going to go on a little aside here I think they should make it like they, whenever I see someone in a TV show or a movie take a phone out of their pocket and hold it against their head I cringe I mean because I mean even if they read the manual they're not supposed to do either of those things. And I, I feel like, you know, the way they banned smoking in, in or got rid of smoking in most TV shows and movies, they should be doing the same thing with proper cell phone hygiene. Uh, but that was a, that was an off topic opinion of mine. I, I apologize for digressing. Thank you for the question, Anonymous. Uh, a, a, another question. What are the differences between conductive and non-conductive fabric? Well, I mean, the difference is conductive fabric uh, can conduct electricity and electrical signals. Um, uh, and non-conductive won't. Uh, in my experience, and I've evaluated a lot of different materials, all of the effective EMF uh, shielding materials are conductive. So um, we do have a post on that. Give me one second here. There we go. Let me put this, let me throw this into the chat pod for anyone who is following along with that question. This one explains that uh, in, in greater detail. Thank you. Um, I still I, I just quickly looked over a chat. I see 
Oh, someone asked me to put uh, links in chat. Okay, so there was shield this one, and then what did I did I lose all the other? Give me one second. Here we go. This is another one I mentioned, and the Ookla 5G map that I mentioned. Um, so those I think are the links I've been showing. I should I'll make sure any further links I'll I'll put in chat. Uh, if there are any other questions I, that, that are coming through in chat, please put them into the uh, Q and A pod, um, so that I'll, I'll I'll see them. Yeah. So and I I I do not know how to pronounce this name. I apologize, Morgiana. Uh, if you wear your bandana around your neck, will it only protect your neck and the ninety percent and lower? Uh, right. So anyway, the basic point is, and I should have had. Uh, I should have had more of my products handy for the webinar. I apologize that I don't. But for instance, let's take the baseball cap. If you wear the SYB baseball cap, it is only protecting the part of your head that it is covering. That is how all EMF shielding works. It only protects the part, uh, the, the apparel works. It, it, it only protects the part of your body that it is covering. So if you wanted to use the bandana around your neck, that would provide good protection uh, for example, for your thyroid, it would not protect any other part of your body. Thank you for that question. Um, if you create a Faraday cage, such as in a canopy, what happens if there is an opening? So, well, some EMF will get in. Um, now, keep in mind with like, so with a canopy, you uh, really want to make sure that um, you never use any EMF emission technology inside of the canopy or any cage, right? Because these, if, if it can't get a signal, uh, it's going to boost its power output, meaning uh, it will emit more EMF. And eventually it will likely get a signal, but even if it doesn't, uh, that EMF will still just be bouncing around inside the canopy. Even if it does get a signal, you'll still have a tremendous amount bouncing inside around inside the canopy. That's how all phones work. That's why they emit more radiation when you have fewer bars, because they are working harder to establish and maintain that cell connection. Now, if there's an opening, and let's assume you're, you're doing it right, right? So there's nothing inside of the canopy. If there is an opening, more EMF will come through than would otherwise come through, and it will then bounce around. Now, it doesn't bounce around forever, right? I, as I just said in the presentation, the power of EMF radiation diminishes exponentially with distance. So it dissipates, uh, but it'll still bounce around until it dissipates. Thank you. Um, okay, Anonymous asks, uh, about new EMF infrastructure being put up, how can we stay up uh, on the up and up on where they will be constructed, voted approved on to be constructed, uh, specific cities? Um, could I name types of buildings that I believe have the highest EMF output, airports, hotel lobbies, where else? I mean, airports for sure. And Kathy Cook talked about that in our last webinar about flying uh, more safely, which you can find on our website. Um, in my, huh, so, I mean, I feel like cities have more, like the, the more urban a place is, the more the EMF is gonna be an issue. Um, and if you, you happen to live in the place, and I, I, I don't imagine most of you do, uh, but if you happen to live in a place where a lot of the construction is solid concrete instead of drywall, uh, there'll actually be less EMF once you get inside a building, uh, because concrete is a really effective dampener compared to drywall. Now, um, in general, I feel every city that I go to, and as you can see, I don't spend most of my time in cities anymore, uh, but every city I go to and I take measurements, the levels to me are crazy. Um, and I mean, I, I, I don't avoid cities. I just don't like living in them full time <laughs> anymore. For I mean, not just because of EMF, but the EMF is a part of it. Um, uh, but in terms of infrastructure, I mean, because it, 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 increasingly it's hard to even see where these antennas are because uh, with 5G, the, the antennas have, have become smaller and smaller and closer to get uh, densely, more densely packed. Um, anything near a power station though, power is, even though we, a lot of the attention, deservedly so, ends up on cell phone networks and towers and so forth, it's still these old school power stations and substations 
um, that are, are huge. So I used to live not too far, I mean, far enough that it wasn't horrible, but not too far from an electricity substation in Los Angeles. And every time I walked past it, and this was before I was even really focused on EMF, but I knew about it because of my father, uh, I, I was like, oh my God. And if you actually take these uh, measurements anywhere close to those substations, you'll see they are, they are crazy high. Um, so power, uh, power infrastructure is another big consideration. Now, you asked a separate question in there about staying up on top of things, uh, 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 keeping abreast of developments. Oh, I, I hit a shortcut. Um, give me, I'm trying to load a link here. Let me see if I can find it. Now, there's a lot of these around the country. This one, however, uh, runs a weekly uh, web, uh, webinar um, uh, and, and connects people from all around the country who are working to challenge and impact and affect regulations locally. So um, if you are interested in learning uh, that level of engagement and involvement, then I would strongly encourage you to, um, to make contact with Virginians for safe tech.org. I know it says Virginia, but as I say, they run a nationwide network um, and you can contact them and you can donate to them and you can learn a lot about the work that not only they are doing, but people around the country are doing. Okay. And I, did I put that? Yeah, I put that in chat. Great. Um, Jilly asks, you mentioned headphones as a safer means of speaking on the mobile phone. Are you able to recommend the tech specifics, what we should be looking for? So, I mean, any headset, any wired headset is going to be much, much safer than holding a cell phone up to your head. Um, that's now, don't ever use Bluetooth headphones. I, that's, I, in, in a lot of ways, I, I consider myself a, a kind of a realist, right? That um, we live in this world, uh, there's going to be EMF exposure, tech creates a lot of value. And so when you evaluate the health risk, you have to balance it against the value that the tech creates. Uh, so there are very few technologies. I mean, there's a growing number, but there are very few where I say that's insane, don't do it. And uh, one of those is uh, Bluetooth headsets, uh, because then you're just you're just you, instead of getting the radiation from the phone, you're getting it from the headset. And people tend to wear these things in both ears for extended periods of time. Um, so just don't do that. But any wired headset is going to be much, much safer. Um, uh, is going to be much, much safer than holding a phone up to your head or using a wired headset. Mm -hmm. And so when you're on that wired headset, uh, just keep the phone as far away from you as is practical. Um, and the further away, the less exposure. Now, if you really want to cut out all the, ex uh, all that exposure, right? Cause even wired headsets, they really reduce your exposure. And I, I, why does it keep doing that? Um, it really reduces your exposure. But for there are people who want to cut out even more, right? Because with any wired headset, the wire in the headset is going to conduct some amount of this radiation um, uh, up, up the wire, some amount of the radiation from your phone up the wire and, and towards your head. So that's why we make these anti-radiation headset uh, devices. One is the air tube headset, and the other is the headset anti-radiation device. This is a, a wire. Uh, this is a it's like a wired headset, but without the wire. So it uses air. And this one is actually a filter that will filter the stray EMF and allows you to use any headset that you would like. Uh, so, but even if you don't invest in these products, use wired headsets or speakerphone because you're going to really cut uh, the exposure significantly. Um, there we go. Looking back. Sue asks, will this talk be recorded and sent to those who registered? Yes. Uh, this talk uh, is being recorded and barring any catastrophe between now and when I get through this queue of questions, uh, it will be encoded and you will be sent the link tomorrow in the same email where you are getting the ebook that accompanies uh, this presentation. Thank you. Um, Jan says, would like to see a replay. Yes, we have a replay. It's coming to you tomorrow. Uh, the discounts um our uh, this discount expires at midnight tonight though and that's midnight pacific time 
Um, so even when you see it in, in the replay, it won't, it won't work. I'd like to reward the people who, who take the time to show up live. So thank you. I cleaned my foam pouch in the washing machine and air dried it. Is the lining still effective or did I ruin it? I mean, Sharon, that, to answer that, you'd really need to test. It's not supposed to be cleaned in the washing machine. My only, so uh, my products that are designed to be washed are the ones that are the apparel. So that includes, you know, the bandana, the baseball cap, uh, the wristband, even the baby blanket, anything that's designed to come in direct contact with your skin, where the shielding comes in contact with your skin, apparel products, those are designed to be washed. These other products that I make, like the pouch deluxe and the sling bag, they are not meant to be put into the washing machine. Um, in order to know if, now that doesn't mean washing it ruined it, because uh, it's just a recommended, it, it, it's just recommended treatment is to, to like use a sponge or, or a rag and, and clean it down instead of putting it in the washing machine. But that doesn't mean you ruined it by putting it in the washing machine. The only way to know would be to test. Um, and that would be what you could do. You can, if you don't know how to do that, you can get that, uh, figure that out. Uh, sorry, get the information here at shieldyourbody.com slash test. Thank you. Sue asked, does SYB sell canopies with conductive material? Yes, uh, we do. So that is here on the website. So we have two types of canopies, and this one is actually available uh, right now in three sizes, but we're discontinuing the twin. Uh, so for twin, we're, we're, we're recommending people go for the, uh, what we call the serenity. So this comes in king and queen, and these are made with uh, conductive uh conductive fabric so it's 100 percent silvered cotton fabric thank you uh rex uh says i saw an syb webinar that had a brief portion showing the dirty electricity produced by a power wall how do i find it give me one second bruce i think i know which one you are talking about and I think this is it. So I'm putting it into the chat pod for you. Uh, sorry, not Bruce, Rex. I apologize. I, I, I was looking around. I don't even know where Bruce came from. Okay. Um, hmm. Interesting. This, this is getting philosophical. So for males or females, what parts of the body would you say could be more resilient to keep their smartphone on person if they're on the go throughout the day and need to keep the phone on to receive calls? Uh, I've heard right breast pocket for men away from the heart back pocket, uh, etc. Yeah, I mean, I'll give you one answer to that, which is the hand, right? Because I use my phone in my hand and a lot of people use their phones in their hands and when it's in your hand it's away from you know this part of your body where there's a lot of important stuff um you know like throughout the whole thing right i mean even if you're talking about your back pocket I, in the talk tonight I, I was talking about the increased uh rates of colorectal cancer and how leading experts are linking that to carrying phones in pockets right so I don't think they're like, so when I talk about in the hand, I guess that's partly facetious, but it's also, well, it's more dark comedy than facetious, right? Because I do it. Um, there's no better way of doing it. Like I couldn't put a shield behind the phone when I'm carrying here. Like I, I couldn't put a shield behind the phone when I'm carrying it, because if I did, it would bounce more radiation back to, to my head where I'm looking at it. Right. It, it, um, but when it comes to every other place on the body, I mean, it, it really, it, I, I don't think there is a safer place, um, which is why I make so many options uh, to make it safer to carry the phone. Um, like, from, like I said, from the phone pouch, the 5G shield, the pouch deluxe, the sling bag, which I'll just show because this is my other favorite product again these are my two favorite syb products i mean i wear my baseball cap my syb cap all the time uh, but these i love i use I, I don't leave the house ever without one of these if i need to have my phone with me um 
So that is, I mean, I, yeah, other than that, I mean, men, like, I, I don't understand why men are under this uh, impression that men don't get breast cancer, uh, because men do get breast cancer. And I would never recommend carrying a phone in a breast pocket jacket the way that so many men do. I don't view that as a safe behavior. I don't think carrying this on your person uh, uh, is, is ever safe unless it's in airplane mode, or it could be safer if you're using a product like, like, the several that I've shown you tonight. And I mean, that's just my, my, my honest opinion on that. So um, in terms of expert opinion on that question, that is a good question. I've never heard an expert address that either. I think most would agree with what I have said um, in terms of there's just no safer part to do it. I mean, you're, cause also keep in mind, right? When you're talking about, for instance, you know, carrying in your breast pocket or in your bra can increase the risk of, of breast cancer. Yeah, that's true. Um, but it's also just increasing your overall EMF exposure, right? So just because it can increase the chance of breast cancer doesn't mean that's the only thing that it's doing, right? Because it is going to be increasing your oxidative stress. It is going to be in, uh, interfering with your circadian rhythm. The blood uh, cells that are being exposed, those travel all around the body. Um, the DNA that uh, 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 the DNA impacts uh, can lead to mutations which spread throughout the body, right? So you really want to be cutting out these exposures. I, and and, and I, I think you know your question implicitly uh, in, uh, illustrates some of the risk we're talking about here, right? Because when you're carrying, this is part of why carrying your phone in your pocket is so risky, right? It's not just because how, the strength of the dose, although that's a big part of it. The other part is you end up doing it all day long, every day of your life, or at least every work day of your life. So you're talking about repeated, extended, extreme exposures. And that's why you either shouldn't do it or you should find safer ways of doing it, like with my products. Thank you. Uh, Sue asked the recording posted on the website. Yes, and you'll get the direct link by email uh, tomorrow. Uh, Judith asked about the air tube. I believe I answered that if there's other questions on that. Um, why would some, okay, Talia asked, why would someone pick the sling bag versus the pouch deluxe? Is it just size? Um, size is a big part of it. Uh, as you can see, the sling bag is bigger and it's also big enough for an iPad. The sling bag has more compartments, uh, but they're on, on the other, on the flip side of that, the, the sling bag is really only designed to be carried one way, like a sling bag. Whereas the pouch deluxe is smaller. It only has two compartments. Um, but you can carry it as a cross body bag, you can carry it with the belt hoop, and you can carry it uh, uh, any number of other ways using the carabiner. So this is smaller, it carries less, but it's a little more flexible in terms of how you carry it around. If I'm only carrying my phone and maybe my lip balm or something, I'll bring this. Uh, for days, like when I have to spend out around the city and I have to bring my glasses and uh, my hat, and you know other stuff like so I bring the sling bag. So for me, it really is just a question of size, um, and I only wear this as cross body. But this has a lot more functionality uh, options in terms of how you can carry it. That was a great question. Thank you. I should I should I should actually include that in the presentation. I appreciate that. Um, where does fiber optic cables come into play with EMF? That is a good question. And I've heard varying information on that one. So I don't wanna give an answer, but Kim, if you email my support, so hello at shieldyourbody.com, say I asked you to, to email in, um, I, will, I will try to get you some better information on that. Cause fiber, fiber really should be emitting less EMF. But again, I heard uh, some information kind of contrary to that assumption. So, and I don't know it offhand. So rather than giving you bogus information here, please just email in and I'll see what I can dig up uh, for you. Thank you. Um, my kids, so this isn't in the Q and A pod. My kids both have T1D and wear Dexcoms, which are on Bluetooth 24 seven. Um, what can I do to let, uh, reduce their exposure to EMF? Uh, wow. Um, well, they, 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 they have the phones in their rooms at night because it has to be a certain proximity to read and alert me of their highs and lows. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. So it's not Bluetooth headsets. It's a Dexcom, which 
I guess maybe as a continuous glucose monitor or something like that. Um, yeah, so yeah, uh, so this gets into this. I really should do a whole separate topic on this because I get asked various versions of this question a lot. And um, I mean, when it comes to things that are effectively life, like, so there's no living without EMF, right? It's all about reducing the exposures that are discretionary or optional, or maybe don't add so much value to your life. If we're talking about literally life-saving technology, then you gotta use it, right? I mean, now, so I, I, I uh, like I, I talk about a relative of mine who needed to wear uh, a certain type of wearable uh, tech uh, just to be able to diagnose uh, AFib uh, because whenever he would go to the doctor and they would do the EKGs, the AFib wasn't showing up. And so he got this uh, device um, and we were able to actually diagnose the AFib. And then it also alerted us uh, when he was having an uh, AFib and so forth. And, and so, right, I mean, I, I oppose wearable technology, but I don't oppose all wearable technology w when there are life saving or, or quality of life enhancing functions to be had. So when that kind of question comes up, I say, don't, you know, don't worry about it. Um, what you should do is if EMF exposure is important to you, which it always is because they're talking to me, why else would they be coming to me with a question? But if EMF, reducing EMF is important to you, then focus on other areas of your life in which to reduce your exposure or that of your loved ones. So like the lessons tonight, don't carry your phone on your person, uh, turn off your Wi-Fi at night or go full ethernet and get rid of the Wi-Fi entirely. Uh, never use your laptop in your lap. Always use it further away from you, right? There are other ways of reducing your exposure and don't worry about the thing that's actually saving your life. Um, now, that's the practical answer. The, the, um, the sort of angrier answer for me is that a lot of these things could exist without the wireless functionality or with less of the wireless functionality. And when I say things, I'm talking about these, uh, these health tech devices. Uh, so increasingly, from what I understand, some research I was doing recently, it's hard to now even get a pacemaker that doesn't communicate wirelessly. I mean, pacemakers were saving lives without Wi-Fi for decades. And now it's very hard. And the same thing is true for hearing aids. Hearing aids were helping people hear better for decades. But now it's almost impossible to find a hearing aid that doesn't also do Bluetooth or Wi-Fi or something like that. And to me, it's very frustrating that that choice is being taken away from people, that in order to exploit and take advantage of and enjoy the benefits that this technology provides, you have to engage in uh, these exposures that really the exposure isn't adding value. Um, it's the device itself and the company is just packaging it with these exposures uh, and I find it reckless and infuriating. I mean, this isn't life-saving technology, but I use the, also use the example of my elliptical. There's literally no way to turn off the Bluetooth on my elliptical. And so I'm, you know, when I'm done working out, I unplug it, but I'm like, why well, don't, I don't use the thing that, you know, that I, I forget the name of the, I, cause I never use it. I fit or something that comes with the, the pro form, uh, equipment i never use that but i can't turn it off and apparently from uh w what i've heard from building biologists is that even like on smart tvs when you turn off the wi-fi on all of them it doesn't turn it off um that is it, it like it looks on the screen like you've turned it off like it the setting says oh this is off but it's actually still working in the background uh, on my phone when I was traveling recently, I, I don't remember the exact context, but I was using Wi-Fi and then I turned because uh, I was in a hotel lobby or something and then I turned it off and it said, you know, we're turning off your Wi-Fi. Would you like us to continually scan to let you know when new networks are available? And I'm thinking that's not off. <laughs> If, if you're continually scanning for Wi-Fi, you're emitting Wi-Fi. And, and so they're sneaking more and more of these exposures in. And, and to me, it's reckless and it's it's disrespectful. It's infuriating. Um, okay, but there I went off on a tangent again. I apologize for that. So, um, 
Okay, Sue asks, what about RF radiation from ball cap touching head? Don't you need space between you and blocking item? Sue, that is a very good question. Um, and there is not a simple answer to that one. Um, so uh, if you email, again, email hello at shieldyourbody.com. I will, I will, and say that I said to, say you attended this and uh, I said to email in. Um, I will get you more information on that. That is that is a question that um, has been in, investigated, and it is an uncertain uh, it is an uncertain um, uh, verdict at this point. Um, but I know I know what you're referring to, and I'd like to to get you that information separately. Okay. I hope I got everyone's questions. Um, um, so. Yeah, so again, uh, expect an email. It'll, I, I think it, it'll say it comes from Zoom or it may say it comes from me, I forget which, but it'll be generated by Zoom. And in there, you'll get a link to this replay and you will get a link to download the, the ebook, the brand new ebook that you're the first people to ever in the world to see. Um, and uh, thank, uh, oh, and yeah, I should say this, this discount that you see on your screen, this is valid until midnight tonight Pacific time. So that's a, about 10, just under 10 more hours. It's 25% off, uh, works on my entire catalog. But of course, given tonight's discussion, I hope that you choose to, to use it to take advantage of the, any of the products that I make that make it safer to carry your phone. Um, thank you very much for taking the time today to turn out for SYB's uh, very first webinar of 2023. Um, have a great, a great rest of your day.